Hello and welcome to the video, where I will be delving deep into the world of realistic shooters and discussing the topic of elitism. Oh. Perfect! <laughs> if you're a casual gamer who enjoys playing video games for fun, like some loser, <laughs> you might have felt that certain gaming communities are unwelcoming and hostile towards newcomers. I found realistic shooters and milsims to be notorious for this, and it needs to stop. Got him. <laughs> realistic shooters are games that simulate real life combat situations with varying degrees of accuracy. The gameplay mechanics are often challenging, and the games are designed to reward players who invest a lot of time and effort into mastering the more complex gameplay. This level of difficulty often attracts a particular type of gamer. Those who take their game of choice a bit more seriously and have a competitive nature and desire to win. As a result, the community of realistic shooters has become notoriously known for its elitism. The game mechanics are complex and require a lot of patience to master, which leads to a situation where veteran players view newcomers with disdain. Instead of welcoming new players, they tend to ridicule them and dismiss them as noobs or filthy casuals. Players who do nothing more than get in the way and ruin the experience the veterans want. This behavior creates an unwelcoming atmosphere that can be daunting for new players. It's not uncommon for the players to quit the game before they have even had a chance to fully understand it, purely because of the veteran players they have to deal with. Goodbye. First of all, I think it's important to understand why this kind of behavior is so prevalent in realistic shooter communities specifically. Firstly, I think these games often require a significant investment of time and effort to master. They can have a steep learning curve with complex mechanics and a high skill ceiling. As a result, players who have put in time and effort to get good at these games can feel a sense of superiority over those who haven't. As there's no skill-based matchmaking, veterans and new players alike will regularly be playing together, exacerbating this issue. Additionally, there is often a perception among veteran players of this genre that the more realistic a game is, the better it is. This can lead to a mentality that anyone who plays these games, air quotes, incorrectly or in a less realistic manner is somehow ruining the gaming experience and should not be welcomed into the community. Thirdly, there is often a strong sense of community and identity among players of these games. As the player base in realism shooters is often smaller and server selection more limited, the same players often end up playing in the same places with the same people repeatedly and expect a similar level of gameplay each time. Players will often join clans to more easily and consistently play with other individuals who can create the type of gameplay they're looking for. This obviously goes on to alienate new or more casual players, those without any community ties, completely as these players are not furthering the specific playstyle a prevalent clan is trying to create. I hate this elitist culture. I'd be lying if I said I didn't understand where they're coming from. Realism shooters are very team-oriented games, and the quality of each round you play is heavily dependent on the quality of players you have on your team. Playing with a bunch of new players who just don't get it can often entirely ruin a veteran player's play session, which is particularly frustrating for realism shooters as a single round can often last an hour, if not more. However, while I see where they're coming from, this toxic attitude is detrimental to the realism shooter community and to the genre as a whole. When new players feel unwelcome or ostracized due to their lack of experience or knowledge, this obviously goes on to create a toxic environment that can discourage newcomers from joining the community. This can lead to a lack of diversity in the player base and, perhaps more importantly, stifle the growth of the very game these gatekeepers are protecting. This can often lead to a lack of development or updates for the game you love playing by only catering to a small group of players who are willing to adhere to strict rules and regulations game developers may miss out on potential players who could bring fresh ideas and perspective to the game while simultaneously removing motivation for devs to continue to support their own product. Oh my god, I'm getting really good at this. It's all well and good taking the time to dunk on elitists, but what can actually be done? I don't want realism shooters and the genre as a whole to die out. In fact, really, I want it to grow, but this won't happen unless new players feel like they're actually welcome in their new game. In my mind, 
progress comes from two places, prominent communities within these games, but also from the devs themselves. From the community, server owners could do more than simply title their server New Players Welcome. Instead, they could actively look for experienced players willing to mentor new players, showing them the ropes and helping them develop their skills. They could also organize new player events, events specifically designed for new players where they can learn the basics of the game and play with others of similar skill levels with experienced squad leaders. Beyond this, there could be additions to in-game and community rules which would set out clear expectations for behavior specifically towards new players and outline consequences for violating those expectations. In-game communities could work together to standardize these rule sets so they're consistent across servers. The devs can help out too. It's one thing to have a manual which has all the game information in it, but it would be much better to have an actual tutorial players could use to learn the ropes in the actual game. And I am aware that some realism shooters do have a tutorial, but in my mind, a realism shooter tutorial should go beyond simply showing players how to crouch or adjust their sights, but actually expand on how in-game voice communication works, regular call outs to listen out for, as well as helping new players understand basic expectations for at least the main classes in the game. You could also look to implement basic in-game progression based on points or playtime or something along those lines. So for example, a new player would not immediately have access to the more complex kits or vehicles, allowing them a better pathway to learning the game in stages over being thrown in at the deep end completely lost. You could even take this one step further and offer up a new player friendly in-game rule set with slightly adjusted game mechanics. For example, in Squad, having a version of the game where logistics is simplified and fobs can be built based on how many squad members you have nearby, as opposed to having to organize build, ammo, and regular logistics runs. Cool, good one. Problem solved. I understand some of these are controversial and probably entire videos in themselves but certainly food for thought, if nothing else. It's no secret that realism shooters are a great way to immerse yourself in a challenging and competitive gaming experience. However, the elitism that comes with it can be incredibly off-putting for new players. Both game communities and devs should aim to be more inclusive and welcoming of these new players. Getting more people involved in your project and keeping them there once they're in only leads to benefits for everyone. But what do you think? Should new players be rounded up and pushed off a large ledge? Should devs make their realism shooters as hard and uninclusive as possible? Are you an elitist and can't wait to tell me just how wrong I really am? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, all the best and have a great day. Oh, I stabbed him and he didn't die. Okay.